What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Will members get exclusive content? Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you will receive a notification every time that I drop a video and you can go and check it out, like the video, and leave a comment if you support me and support my channel. Let's get into it. Once again, we're headed to High Desert State Prison, level four, 180, where I've seen the most, by far, bloody removals. Constantly in High Desert, there's violence. When you come to the yard, nearly every day that you come to the yard, nearly every day, one group or another is coming to tell the leaders of the other group that they're about to issue a removal. Groups give the other groups a head up for various reasons. In case you may have a knife on you, you can get it off of you. Because it's gonna be yard recall. Because once they say it's about to be a removal, we know that it's gonna be bloody and vicious. The program is not gonna continue right then and there. Lay the yard down. They're gonna lay the yard down, take dude out on a stretcher, and yard recall. And sometimes they might strip you out. Check if they, if they didn't catch the people that did it, they may wanna search everybody. Check, check your hands, see if you have wounds on there, blood, etc. So a group will come and give you a head up to let you know, and it's about to go down so that you can take care of any business. If you came to the yard because someone owes you some money and you're going to pick up your money, well, this is, the, this is your cue to go and pick up your money because the yard's about to go down. If you came out here to make a transaction, go ahead and make your transaction. If you're doing pull-ups, hurry up and fill, finish up your sets, bro, because it's about to go down. So, and they're coming to the leaders of, of different factions and let the leader handle it how he wants to as far as how he gets the information to his people that it's about to go down. Then we, and it go down, so an incident will happen right there in High Desert and we're going to lock down for two weeks, three weeks. And then when we come off, the, these, who, whatever group it was, since it, we had went on lockdown, they didn't have a chance to finish cleaning up the situation. There's still a bit of a mess. And so the cleanup must continue. And that same group often attacks someone again because they didn't have a chance to attack that one, that, that person at first because they was busy attacking this person and that person. Then they went on lockdown. And so when the lockdown is over, they have to finish cleaning up the mess. Constant lockdowns, constant cell searches, constant violence, constant politics, constant stabbing, constantly under the gun in High Desert State Prison. And in this one situation, well, a Southsider had hit the yard and he had came from the shoe program. And when he hit the yard there in High Desert, for some reason, he decided, I found all this out later, that he was gonna tell the other Southsiders, essentially, that they now had to listen to him. That somehow he was the head honcho. A similar situation just happened in Sentinella State Prison, where I paroled from, April 19, 2022. My two year anniversary is nigh, and I will be celebrating two years of freedom. There in Sentinella, I'm going to get into that story. A, a Southsider came and did the same thing, said that he was the man, that he was the shot caller, and that everyone now had to listen to him. Well, they vetted him, did the investigation, and said, Who the hell are you? And Long story short, because I'm going to get into the story. He was in my vent. He was downstairs from me. Well, they went into the cell and did some things to him that are cringeworthy, nightmare-inducing. And this guy here in High Desert 
had the same gall and same audacity. He came and said that there was a new sheriff in town, that he was the man, and that all of the Southsiders had to now listen to him and pay homage and pay their dues. Physically pay money to him, a third of everything that they get. Really? Well, a Southsider that I knew very well and had been doing business with, he came to me and was running this down. And he said that he didn't understand where this guy too had got the balls to come and do this. Because the leader, the real leader there on the yard, well, he wasn't playing any games. I knew the guy, we just spoke to one another, we spoke to each other and we were okay. We never had a personal relationship, but I can just tell that he was one of the guys that was very serious about his people, his structure, and his belief system. Just by the way that he carried himself there on the yard in high desert. And to be a leader there in high desert, you had to be strong because everyone there was strong. So you're gonna be a leader of strong men. And well, this leader, he decided, really, this guy is gonna come and challenge me and challenge my authority. He must be removed viciously and violently. And that's exactly what happened. The Southsider came and he told me, hey, China, we're gonna get rid of this dude tomorrow. I said, yeah, yeah. and he that's when he explained what the situation was over, that this guy had somehow mustered up the, uh, the unmitigated gall to come and say that everyone had to now bow down to his word. And they didn't even know who he was. So I said, okay, me and my celly, the homie High Power from A. Trey Hoover, we called him High Power because he had did time in High Power in the, in the county jail. So the homie H.P., the big homie, we were going over this that night after the Southsider and I had conversed. And I'm asking him, because he had more experience in prison than I did at that time. Why would someone come and put themselves in this sort of situation? And he said that sometimes these dudes are loose cannons. And in their pursuit of money and power, they were put themselves in precarious positions. And that's exactly what this guy did. And so the following day, we came out to yard and I alerted all of the homies off the dribble about what was about to transpire. And right after I told all of the homies, the Southsider, a different Southsider came to me and said, we're about to take care of business. Everybody stand clear, be on guard, be, you know, in other words, get out of the way. Get everything off of you that, that you're not supposed to have on your person. We're about to slaughter someone. And I said, okay, I didn't let him know that I already knew. I said, okay, cool, good looking out. And he went to a couple of other blacks, the head of the, of, of, of the Bloods, the head of the Crips, et cetera. The North Daniels, you can see them making their rounds, talking, letting everybody know it's about to go down and it's about to go up. And I'm keeping my eye open on the dude who I know is the target. This guy who had mustered up the gall to come and try to take over. And as I'm watching, they did not play with him. Typically, the Southsiders will send three people at you, 13. They'll send three at you. And when they come, they really don't come to play. When they come in, to remove someone, particularly there in high desert. Again, they were saving face and were extremely violent. That, that's the bottom line. And this dude was over there close to the wall that you go through to get to canteen and the program office. Perhaps sensing something was up. Well, that did not protect him being close by the police. 
Because when people are coming to take care of business, that doesn't matter. And I saw perhaps 10 Southsiders, 10. The first time I really saw that many coming to do a removal. But the leader, again, having been challenged and outraged and incensed, decided he really wanted to tear this dude to pieces. So he said, I'm going to show you who the real leader is. When I send a bunch of people at you, and they're going to come on my command and try to unalive you. And so as I'm looking, I see perhaps again, 10 Southsiders begin to approach him all methodically. They were on either side and were really surrounding him. I saw how they did it. It was very structured. And they came and they spread out and encircled. And they all went for their weapon. And they all came out with a weapon. And when they came out with this weapon, they began to attack this guy. And he didn't stand a chance. He tried to swing back for all of two seconds. And then he just hit the ground and covered up. But they were on him like packs of wild dogs. And they were attacking and hitting him. And the police finally ran over there. I believe, according even to the South Side, they already knew what was about to happen because they already know who the shot caller is. And they, they're saying, this dude is coming talking about, he's the shot caller. They know themselves. This is not about to go well for this particular gentleman. And so they come and they train their weapons on the people who are attacking this poor guy. And finally, after what seemed like minutes, and the Southsiders themselves being a bloody mess because of all of the stabbings, the stab wounds that they had administered to his body. And they finally did stop. And they came and they took the dude out on the stretcher. I did not think that he would survive such an attack because it was vicious and bloody. And for a while, they did not stop. They were hitting him all about the face area. They were, in my mind, they were trying to end him, slump him, park him. However, somehow he did survive. But naturally, he was never the same again and never saw or heard from again. And they recalled the yard. They searched just the Southsiders, stripped them out, and they got, you know, pretty much everyone that they did it, because they did it right there at the front wall, right in front of their tower. They didn't care. When it's time to go, it's time to go. And they took care of business. And we went on lockdown for a week or so, and we came off, and it was back to program as usual. Well, coming up, and people were asking about my last story on the Hoover Hoover attack about Tiny Goofy, and said, man, Tiny Goofy's alive, isn't it? It wasn't about Tiny Goofy. I said that I'm gonna do that story, but this story was not about Tiny Goofy, and Porky is what I had said. But y'all didn't follow the story, some of you guys. You didn't catch on. It, I said that two people had passed away. And Tiny Goofy had not, has not passed away, has not passed away, and, and he has not. Then he, I'm not talking about him. But coming up, I'm going to get to the Tiny and Goofy Porky story, whether you guys like it or not. Stay free, people!